हेलो कन्ना आई होप दैट यू ऑल आर फिट एंड फाइन एंड लेट मी टेल यू दैट आई एम कम्प्लीटली फाइन एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू क्विकली रिवाइज तरवली रिवाइज द इनकम फ्रॉम हाउस प्रॉपर्टी चैप्टर फॉर सी ए इंटरमीडिएट इनकम टैक्स एग्जामिनेशन एंड एज यूजल माई हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू यू इज टू लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल बिकॉज आई विल बी मोटिवेटेड टू कीप ऑन पोस्टिंग वीडियोज लाइक दिस नाउ कमिंग टू द सब्जेक्ट I usually tell my students that income from house property and set off and carry forward are two chapters where the theory will seem very very simple but when you are actually solving the questions only you will know the practical difficulty so as soon as you are finishing this video go to the study material solve all the questions and then you will be thorough for the examination now coming to the chapter like any other head of income even for house property there is a charging section and there is a computation section the charging section is section 22 which says that for income from house property to arise there should be a house property the assessee should be the owner of the house property and the property should not be used for assessee's own business or profession okay so from this i want to clarify two points for you number 1 if the property is used for assessee's own business or own profession then you ignore such property and number 2 if the assessee's business itself is giving house property on rent then it will be covered under pgbp chapter kana not under house property chapter fine okay now let us discuss what is house property house property means building or land appurtenant thereto building means permanent structure land appurtenant means land or facilities or features that are uh, that are attached to the building for example parking lot swimming pool garden statues etc all these are land appurtenant now what are the types of house property there are two major types kana lop sop lop means let out property it means the property that has been given on rent and sop means self occupied property self occupied property means property in which the assessee himself is residing or he is not able to reside because he is living in some other city in a property which does not belong to him so this is self occupied property in income tax up to two self occupied properties are fully exempt no problem but if a assessee is having more than two self occupied properties then any two can be claimed as exempt and the remaining will become dlop that is deemed to be let out property this deemed to be let out property brings a notional income concept in income tax it means what even though the assessee has not given that property on rent still a notional rent will be calculated and tax will be charged on such rent that also we will see how to calculate okay now sir what if house property is outside india if house property is outside india then for resident ordinarily resident the rent is fully taxable because global income is taxable for rnor and nr that is a resident not ordinarily resident and non resident the rent will be taxable only if it is received in india okay now owner sir who is the owner the owner is the person who is entitled to receive the income from property so if i am having the right to receive the income then i only will be considered as owner number 2 it includes deemed owner under section 27 which we are going to discuss in some time next registration of sale deed is not compulsory so it is not necessary that sale deed should be there then only i will be considered as owner it is not compulsory next sir what if owner of building and owner of land are two separate people then you only focus on owner of building kana because that is building is only house property next what if there is a disputed property there is a confusion as to who is the owner of the property in such case income tax department will decide the owner and ownership should be in the previous year need not be there in the assessment year means when i am receiving the rent at that time i am the owner it is enough later on if i am not the owner it is not a problem okay then exception of ownership is arrears of rent and unrealized rent this i will be discussing along with arrear and unrealized concept now come let's come to deemed owner concept section 27 gives six points of deemed ownership point number 1 if a person transfers the house property to spouse spouse means what husband how husband or wife okay without consideration or for inadequate consideration then the transferer will be considered as deemed owner of the property 
but however there is an exception where there is agreement to live apart then this provision will not apply for example if i transfer my house property to my wife without consideration or for inadequate consideration then also i will only be considered as deemed owner of the property but if me and my wife are having an official agreement to live separately in such case this provision will not apply next transfer to a minor child without or for inadequate consideration so if i am transferring my property to my minor child without consideration or for inadequate consideration then also i will only be considered as deemed owner of the property okay here also there is an exception minor married daughter if property is transferred to minor married daughter then this concept will not apply next holder of impartible estate so for example there are two people kanna a and b they both are jointly owning a property but both do not know what is their share in the property hence both a and b together will be considered as association of person this association of person will be the deemed owner of the property and tax should be paid by the aop you get my point next members of cooperative society company etc sometimes what happens no kanna there is an apartment or housing society where there are many many flats this flat is generally in the name of a company okay all the flats are in the name of the company and the people who are shareholders of the flat are only the people who are living in the flat hence the people who are shareholder will be considered as deemed owner okay so the shareholders of the company or if it is a cooperative society then the members of the cooperative society will be considered as deemed owner of the property next if the possession of the property is transferred to another person then also the person who is receiving the possession will be considered as deemed owner if three conditions are satisfied as per transfer of property act topa so what are the three condition possession is transferred number 2 sale consideration is paid or promised to be paid and number 3 even though sale deed is not executed some other document should be executed okay so if these three conditions are satisfied if someone is giving me the possession of their property i will become the deemed owner of the property okay next right to property for at least 12 years so for example a person is giving me their property for a 12 year lease okay in such case i will get i will be called the deemed owner of the property next so now we are thorough with the computation uh, sorry the charging section let us jump to the computation section to compute income from house property there are certain steps karna what are the steps first you have to cal- uh, uh, compare municipal value and fair rent whichever is higher you have to compare it with the standard rent whichever is lower among them will be called as expected rent this expected rent you have to compare it with the actual rent and you will get the gav or gross annual value this gav from this you can reduce municipal taxes and you will get the nav that is net annual value from net annual value you can further reduce section 24a standard deduction of 30% and section 24b interest on housing loan and lastly you will get income or loss from house property now let us see what is the meaning of these terms firstly what is municipal value municipal value means the value of rent that is decided by the municipal authority next sir what is fair rent fair rent or it is also called reasonable rent it means the rent of a similar property in the same area okay these two you are only going to compare and you are going to take the higher value this higher value you are going to compare with standard rent what is standard rent standard rent means in certain areas there is an act called rent control act such act will fix what should be the maximum rent in that area this maximum rent only will be called as standard rent so the higher of municipal value and fair value fair rent you are going to compare with standard rent and you are going to take whichever is lower this lower value will be called as expected rent correct huh? now this expected rent you will be comparing with actual rent what is actual rent actual rent means rent received plus rent receivable minus unrealized rent sir unrealized rent means what bad debts correct but to reduce this unrealized rent you have to satisfy 
rule four four conditions rule four four conditions what are the four conditions that number one the tenancy should be bona fide it means the tenancy should be a genuine tenancy number two the tenant should have vacated the property okay if you want to reduce the unrealized rent you should make sure the tenant should have vacated the property or if he is not vacating you should at least take steps for him to take for him to vacate the property number 3 after vacating him from the property you should not keep him as tenant in some other property so tenant should not be occupying any other property of the assessee and number 4 you should take reasonable steps to recover the rent for example sending legal notice etc so if rule 4 4 conditions are satisfied only then assessee can reduce this unrealized rent from the actual rent okay va wow. so uh, you, now you have to compare expected rent and actual rent whichever is higher will become the gross annual value correct from this gross annual value you can reduce municipal taxes sir what is this municipal taxes municipal tax means tax that is collected from municipal authority or municipality or corporation or cantonment board or local authority by whatever name it is called the taxes that are collected okay and tax can be of many types property tax house tax water tax local tax sewerage tax drainage tax etc garbage tax etc etc all these are municipal taxes now be very very careful municipal taxes can only be taken as deduction if it is paid by the owner if the tenant is paying municipal tax you cannot take the deduction moreover municipal tax is fully allowed on payment basis fully allowed on payment basis fully allowed on payment basis it means what if i am not paying the municipal tax i will not get the deduction sir what if i pay the municipal tax for 5 years can can i take entire amount as deduction answer is yes if i pay for 5 years also i can take the entire amount as deduction so it is paid on it is uh, allowed on payment basis now in the question if municipal tax is given in percentage form then take the percentage of municipal value next sir what if property is outside india then for that property for that local authority if you are paying any tax it will be called as municipal taxes okay sir if gav is zero then municipal tax deduction will also be zero if gav is zero you cannot reduce the municipal taxes okay so see here when i come to this computation if there is a self occupied property in okana then always since there is no rent the gav will be zero okay and you cannot take municipal taxes as deduction so there is only one deduction that will be allowed which is the interest deduction under section 24b because of this self occupied property the income from house property will either be negative or it will be zero moreover if the assessee is choosing default tax regime under section 115 bac then this interest will not be allowed as deduction hence if the assessee is choosing section 115 bac then income from self occupied property will always be zero okay now let us talk about the deductions other deductions firstly standard deduction section 24a means standard deduction which is flat 30 percentage of nav so take the nav take 30 percentage of nav it is allowed as deduction but since this 30 percent is allowed as deduction the act will not allow any other deduction so for example if you are doing any repair insurance painting or any other carpenter work anything any expense that is done on the house property will not be allowed as deduction because there is a standard deduction okay next interest on housing loan it is allowed as deduction however this interest on housing loan as i told you for self occupied property alone it is not allowed in section 115 bac that is default tax regime this you have to be very careful sir what is this interest on housing loan if you have taken a loan for the purpose of acquisition construction repair renovation or reconstruction for these five purposes then interest on such loan can be allowed as deduction fine sir can unpaid purchase price be treated as loan answer is yes sir what is this unpaid purchase price for example 
A has purchased the property from B. Okay, so A has to make the payment of rupees one crore for the property. Now, what did A do? A only paid twenty lakhs, and balance eighty lakhs. A told that, please treat it as loan, and I will slowly, slowly pay you. Okay, so this eighty lakhs is the unpaid purchase price. This also will be treated as housing loan. Okay. and interest on such loan can be allowed as deduction next what if there is a loan taken to repay the above loan for example i took a housing loan from canara bank but now i am not satisfied with canara bank so i want to close that loan and take another loan from state bank of india in such case if i take a loan from state bank of india and repay this loan from canara bank then the new state bank of india loan also will be considered as housing loan okay or uh, yes housing loan next sir can i only take loan from uh, banks answer is no you can take loan from your friends also relative also anything is fine okay interest will be allowed as deduction next sir what is interest on interest for example if you have paid the loan late you have to pay some extra interest or penal interest this penal interest will not be allowed as deduction next interest is allowed on accrual basis so this only i tell all my students municipal taxes fully allowed on payment basis interest only allowed on accrual basis interest is only allowed on accrual basis so for example if february month interest you have paid in april then with this february month interest be allowed in for example for february 2024 you have paid the interest in april 2024 okay it will be allowed in accrual basis so even though you paid the payment in the next year still it will be allowed in 23 24 because interest is allowed on accrual basis now one special point if you have taken a loan from outside india then while paying the interest you have to deduct the tds if you do not deduct the tds such interest will not be allowed as deduction okay now sir there are some limits for this interest deduction what are these limits let us see firstly let's talk about lop and dlop let out property and deemed to be let out property for this there is no limit on interest whatever interest is paid on housing loan or is accrued on housing loan you can claim it as deduction but when it comes to self occupied property there is a limit what is the limit the limit is 30000 the limit is 30000 but if you satisfy four conditions you can increase this limit to 2 lakh rupees okay what are the four condition number 1 the loan should be taken for either purchase or construction condition number 2 the loan should be taken on or after 1 4 number 3 if it is taken for construction then the assessee should complete the construction within 5 years from the end of the year in which the loan has been taken and number 4 an interest certificate should be taken from the loan provider see this interest certificate point is there no kanna this point will not be mentioned in many of your questions hence it is necessary that you put an assumption that the assc has received a interest certificate and then only you can say that all the four conditions are satisfied okay so this you keep in mind so if all four conditions are satisfied higher amount of 2 lakhs can be claimed as deduction now this interest deduction is there no kanna this is per person hence if the person is having more than two self occupied property and more than two loans then for all the loans combined the maximum limit will be 2 lakh rupees okay i will give you an example for example let's say conditions is there are two self occupied property condition is satisfied for first property not satisfied for second property okay so for first property maximum deduction can be 2 lakh rupees because conditions are satisfied for second property maximum deduction can be how much 30000 rupees but both combined together can you claim 2 lakh 30000 answer is no both combined also you can claim only 2 lakh rupees as deduction maximum because this 2 lakh rupees deduction is for a person it is not for the property okay so this you have to be very very careful and mark a danger symbol here so that you do not make any silly mistake fine now 
सर वॉट इज दिस प्री कंस्ट्रक्शन और प्री एक्विजिशन पीरियड लेट मी टेल यू कन सो लेट से फॉर फिनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर द कंस्ट्रक्शन गॉट कंप्लीटेड ऑन थर्टी वन जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री ओके सो वॉट एवर पीरियड इज देर बिफोर द ईयर इन विच बिफोर द ईयर इन विच द अक्विजिशन और कंस्ट्रक्शन गॉट कंप्लीटेड इज कॉल्ड प्री कंस्ट्रक्शन और प्री एक्विजिशन पीरियड सो वेन द कंस्ट्रक्शन गॉट कंप्लीटेड थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई सो वॉट इज प्री एक्विजिशन पीरियड बिफोर द ईयर सो बिफोर दिस पॉइंट वॉट एवर इंटरेस्ट इज देयर विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज प्री एक्विजिशन और प्री कंस्ट्रक्शन इंटरेस्ट नाउ दिस प्री एक्विजिशन और प्री कंस्ट्रक्शन इंटरेस्ट विल बी अलाउड एज डिडक्शन इन फाइव इक्वल एनुअल इंस्टॉलमेंट्स सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस प्री एक्विजिशन इंटरेस्ट इज फाइव लैख रुपीज सो हाउ इट विल बी अलाउड फाइव लैख डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव इज इक्वल टू वन लैख सो फॉर फाइव इयर्स एवरी ईयर यू कैन क्लेम वन वन लैख रुपी एज डिडक्शन विच इज कॉल्ड प्री कंस्ट्रक्शन और प्री एक्विजिशन डिडक्शन बट हियर ऑल्सो यू बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल सी दिस वन लैख रुपी इज अलाउड एज डिडक्शन नो दिस ऑल्सो इज इंक्लूडेड इन दैट टू लैख रुपी लिमिट ओके सो इवन प्री कंस्ट्रक्शन इंटरेस्ट और प्री एक्विजिशन इंटरेस्ट शुड बी इंक्लूडेड इन दैट लिमिट एंड मैक्सिमम यू कैन क्लेम टू लैख रुपीज ओनली इफ इट इज अ सेल्फ ऑक्युपाइड प्रॉपर्टी ओके सो With respect to 115 BAC, you be very very careful. If it is a LOP, DLOP, no problem. But if it is a SOP, then you cannot claim any interest on housing loan as deduction. And also one more point, very very important. If you have a loss from house property, you can do intra head adjustment, but you cannot do inter head adjustment. In old scheme, you can do inter head adjustment up to two lakh rupees. But in new scheme, you cannot do any inter head adjustment. Fine. So first you do intra head, then directly it will go to carry forward. Fine. This point I will again discuss in the set off and carry forward chapter. Then it will be very very clear. Okay. Now let us come back to this and let us fully finish off this computation. So in self occupied property, you can only claim the deduction of interest on housing loan. and you will get loss from house property but if there is a new scheme that is section 115 bac which is the default tax regime then sop case income from house property will always be zero then in lop case all the uh, figures will be there and you have to do the calculation but when it comes to dlop that is deemed to be let out property in such case there will be no actual rent hence the expected rent only will become gav expected rent will become gav also one more point karna in question sir what if they gave me municipal value but they did not give me any fair rent fair rent is not given in question so what should i do then don't consider fair rent directly take municipal value in the next step okay sir i took municipal value in the next step now the question does not give me standard rent also what to do if standard rent is also not there then directly take this municipal value as expected rent okay so if any value is missing then you ignore that step and go to the next step directly fine so this is the basic calculation of income from house property now let us discuss all the special concepts firstly let us discuss the concept of vacancy sir vacancy means what vacancy means the house property is available for rent but no one has come and occupied the house property okay that is only called vacancy so in case of vacancy what to do in such case don't do that expected rent with actual rent comparison instead what you will do see here in case of vacancy you are not going to compare expected rent and actual rent then what are you going to compare you compare expected rent with actual rent plus vacancy rent actual rent plus vacancy rent and see whichever is higher if expected rent is higher take expected rent as gav but if actual rent plus vacancy rent is higher then take actual rent as gav so while comparison you should add the vacancy rent but while taking the answer you take only the actual rent okay so here you have to be very careful there is a logic behind this also which i have taken in class but that i will not be going to discuss here so when it comes to vacancy don't do expected rent or actual rent whichever is higher instead you compare expected rent plus vacancy rent with 
sorry actual rent plus vacancy rent with expected rent if uh, actual rent plus vacancy rent is higher then actual rent is gav if expected rent is higher then expected rent is gav fine so while comparison you take the vacancy rent but while putting the gav you take only the actual rent fine now so what if there are more than two self occupied property if there are more than two self occupied property then you have to solve the questions in different different combinations for example if there are three properties a b and c then first assume that b and c are self occupied and a is dlop that is deemed to be let out property then find the answer similarly find the answer if a and b are self occupied and c is dlop and then a and c are self occupied property and b is deemed to be let out property then in all the three answers c in which answer the income is the lowest and that lowest income will only be the final answer for this you will not be able to understand by seeing this video only when you are solving that question which is there in the study material you will be understanding the concept okay so assume all the house properties are dlop and find the income from house property then you have to solve the question multiple times to find which is the most beneficial answer now sir what if a property is partly let out and partly self occupied area wise for example there is a house property and there are two floors one floor is given on rent one floor is self occupied in such case what to do very very simple both floors you treat it as separate house property and solve the question so treat each area like a separate property so you have to divide the municipal value the municipal taxes fair rent standard rent everything you have to divide based on area area basis you have to divide but don't divide the actual rent because actual rent is coming only for the rented portion correct so uh, don't divide the actual rent and then solve the question very very simple now what if the house property is partly let out and partly self occupied time wise for example for 6 months it was self occupied property remaining 6 months it was let out property in such case what to do very very simple karna just treat it as a let out property and solve the question done next sir what if property is acquired in between the year if property is acquired in between the year then take municipal value fair rent expect uh, standard rent etc on proportionate basis okay so only for let's say if you have acquired after 5 months then for balance 7 months only you have to take the municipal value fair rent etc but don't divide the municipal taxes because municipal taxes is allowed on payment basis so if you are paying even in the Uh, last seven months, take the entire amount as deduction. Similarly, don't divide the interest because interest is fully paid only by the assessee. So don't divide this interest also. Next, section twenty-five A, arrears of rent and un unrealized rent. Sir, what is arrear of rent? Arrear of arrear of rent means a disputed rent of the past that is received in the current period. Okay, and unrealized rent means bad debts of rent. which is received now okay so recovery of arrears of rent and unrealized rent means there was arrear of rent and unrealized rent and now it has been received in such case in the year of recovery it should be taxed under income from house property if it was not taxed earlier if it was taxed earlier then ignore it but if it was not taxed earlier then in the year of recovery you have to tax it okay these both are taxable even if assessee is not the owner so for example i was the owner of the property in 2021 okay that time there was an unrealized rent of 2 lakh rupees now in 2024 i am not the owner but i have received this 2 lakh rupees even though i am not the owner still this 2 lakh rupees will be taxed under income from house property that is why before itself i told you that arrears of rent and unrealized rent recovery is exception to ownership concept okay now sir how will we tax this recovery of uh, arrears of rent and unrealized rent very simple take the entire value and you can allow 24a standard deduction of 30 percentage so the balance 70 percentage will be taxable under income from house property okay and since standard deduction is allowed 
no other expense will be allowed like legal expense etc nothing will be allowed as deduction now let us discuss discuss joint ownership or co ownership sir what happens when more than one person is owner of a same property in such case you have to see whether share is definite and ascertainable okay it means what that you can easily determine what is the share of the different different joint owners or co owners if you cannot determine the shares then all the co owners together will be called as aop and the aop will be taxed okay which i discussed when i told you about holder of impartible estate but this taxation of aop is not there in your syllabus okay in your syllabus you have only the cases where the share is definite and ascertainable so for example there is a property where there are two owners a and b and a is the 50% owner b is also 50% owner this means share is definite and ascertainable you know what percentage is owned by whom in such case when it comes to dlop or lop you calculate for the entire property and at the end you divide the answer in the ownership ratio okay and when it comes to self occupied property you calculate the income from house property separately because both these co owners will get the benefit of the interest deduction okay for example there is a house where there is a single house where a is the 50% owner b is the 50% owner sir if a has paid an interest of 2 lakh rupees and b also has paid an interest of 2 lakh rupees then how much interest will be allowed answer is 4 lakhs will be allowed totally because a also has a maximum limit of 2 lakhs b also has a maximum limit of 2 lakhs if all the conditions are satisfied okay in case of sop now let's talk about composite rent composite rent means the property is given on rent along with some additional features or additional assets in such case you have to ask the question kana is it possible to let out the property without the additional asset if the answer is no for example hotel in the hotel when the hotel is giving a room on rent they compulsorily have to give bed also and other facilities also without bed no one is going to take the hotel room for rent in such case entire rent will be taxed under pgbp or income from other sources chapter but if it is possible to give on rent without the additional assets for example you can give a flat on rent to another person without giving them the furniture in such case you have to see whether the agreement is separable it means what whether the agreement mentions the building rent separately and furniture rent separately in such case if agreement is separable then the building rent will be taxed under house property and furniture rent will be taxed under pgbp or ifos but if the agreement is not separable then the entire rent will be taxable under pgbp or ifos okay so this is the composite rent concept very very simple now let us discuss a couple more points sir what if i give commercial property on rent is that also covered under house property answer is yes so if i am having a house and if i am giving on rent that is also house property if i am having a shop and if i am giving that shop on rent that is also income from house property so it does not differentiate between commercial property and residential property next sir if i am but if i am doing the business of giving property on rent in such case there will not be any income from house property you have to see pgbp chapter this i told you before itself and then lastly uh, when it comes to builder there is a special provision what is the provision see here kana let's say a builder made a very big building where there are so many flats okay now it will take some time for the builder to sell these flats fine now till then these builders these buildings will be house property correct and it will be considered as dlop and the builder has to pay tax under income from house property on all the unsold flats correct so now to escape from this the government has given a relief or the income tax act has given a relief that in the years of construction plus 2 years from the end of the year in which construction gets completed the builder need not pay tax on such house property but however 
after this 2 year period is completed and still if any flat is unsold then it will be treated as deemed to be let out property and the builder should pay the house property tax okay it will be treated as income and the builder should pay the tax i think all the provisions under house property are covered with this you will be thorough with the provisions quickly solve the questions and this chapter will be completely finished for your examination see you in the next video dear till then take care bye bye